So Hawaii for me, although you still have to build a profile there too, so you are shopping a lot more. But at least if there's any bag offers, it kind of just eases the journey here. It's two individuals that felt like they were unfairly treated and therefore they filed a lawsuit against Almez for not selling them a Birkin, right? Like it, it, the gist of it is, is that. And in a way, like I said, I can play advocates on both sides. I personally just don't feel like it needs to be a lawsuit about that. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amy. Time for the March Q&A, so I'm going to tackle all of your questions. But before that, excuse my messy hair guys, I just put it up in a bun. But how gorgeous are these? So these are made of 10 karat solid gold you can choose 14 and 18 so these earrings are really really cool because you can also customize the stones so you can customize each stone to be different stones or you can make them all the same so i just made them all the same and i chose moissanite a lot of people have started choosing moissanite as an alternative to diamonds a lot of people use it as their engagement ring as well i am so pleased with them because the threader is very thin which is exactly what I needed and if you are like me and you love a good dangly earring and it's fine jewelry I'm gonna let my hair down so you can see how pretty it looks like uh, especially if you have long hair as well it just dangles and it just kind of sparkles so beautifully it was sent to me by this company called she said yes and as the name suggests they obviously sell a lot of rings. I didn't go with rings because I was really, really drawn to these pairs of earrings. So I just went with their earrings and I'm very, very pleased with the outcome. I'll have everything linked in the description box with the earrings that I chose and also my discount code that you can use. Um, but of course, you can browse their other products. I just happen to like the earrings a lot. The first question is from Wally R17. So his question was, show us the Hermes offer. Winky emoji. And what was the pre-spend for it in Hawaii? So I'm not gonna show you what I got in this video. Obviously I will dedicate a whole video for it and it's gonna be extra special. I do plan on unboxing and revealing it, just not yet. I'm kind of just savoring the moment just for myself. I know you guys will just have to wait um, but if you have seen my vlog then you would know that I did get some sort of offer uh, it was actually on the last day of my trip so it was a little bit hectic in a way I had already packed all my luggages I guess it was a little stressful in a way but a very happy stress obviously and I am super honored to be able to get an offer from the Hawaii store. I have been shopping there for two years now. So um, in terms of the pre-spend, if I do a quick mental calculation, it's definitely over one to one. So um, slightly more than one to one. So definitely the shopping history helps and it's almost in a way necessary I feel these days because it's so competitive. I love buying things that I can't get here locally because stock is always an issue here so whenever I find things that I would buy anyway but I find them in Hawaii then that kind of helps with my shopping profile and so I guess this trip was a win in the sense that I also got finally a bag offer. Um, but yeah, definitely stay tuned to my channel if you want to, which I know you will, um, to find out what I, I got offered. It's a beautiful, beautiful bag. It's not what I asked for though. It's not any of my top three choices. Never even considered getting it. But um, the combination, as in the color and everything, did make me fall in love with it at first sight. So I, I almost couldn't say no to it. Um, even though it's not something that I would normally get. Anyway, if you saw the vlog, you would see that it was quite a large shopping bag. Next question is by Super Shopaholic. Do you ever sell any of your items? And if so, where can I purchase? I do have two Instagram pages, Fashionably Amy being the main profile and then Fashionably Amy's closet. That's where I typically post anything that I'm trying to rehome. There's only a few things on there right now, which of course you're free to visit. Most of the time that's where I would post it. Sometimes I would also post it on a local Facebook group. So 
trying to sell it locally here in Vancouver within the community here. Um, I don't I don't post there as often anymore just because it's it is a hassle to deal with people that are not super serious about like they are curious to know what the price is and everything and maybe they're trying to haggle but at the end of the day maybe they're not that serious about buying in the first place so i try not to post on facebook anymore and i just i just basically post it on my instagram if i can't sell it myself then i i might send it to a consignment store so usually fashion file or luxe du jour which is canadian and so, yeah, it just depends wherever I get the best quote. So yeah, unless I'm not in a hurry to sell it, I will just leave it on my Instagram. So you must be new to the channel, so welcome, uh, because I've always had those two accounts on, on Instagram. Um, occasionally, I will have subscribers just email me and ask me like, oh, were you thinking of letting this go ever? I have sold like that directly to some subscribers and I have made some videos in the past of items that I have sold, luxury items that I have sold. But as far as lately, I have rehomed some shoes that didn't work out. Um, in terms of Hermes items, if that's, I don't know if that's more of a, what you wanted to know. I hardly sell any of my Hermes. I feel like Hermes is one of those things where you have to think so hard about what you're buying not to regret it because it's so it's so expensive. Like this whole pre-spend to get offers is is so over the top and expensive that I try to really stay true to my heart and to choose items that I genuinely would wear and hopefully, you know, hopefully every decision works out of course it's not always the case but as far as bags i haven't sold any obviously because those are so hard to come by and every single offer that i accept because i do reject some offers i really think super hard about them whether they would work out in my lifestyle so as far as all the bags they're still there <laughs> um yeah i think i sold in terms of bags, I, I suppose I have sold more LV bags and Chanel bags than than anything else because obviously I've been collecting LV and Chanel a lot longer. And so, yeah, you can just go back to some of the videos where um, I talked about things that didn't work out that I sold in the past and you will see the, the kind of things that I did sell in the past. The next question is by Sherleen Darcy. What ratio will you stop spending at the current LMS store and move on to another? Oh, okay. I get it. Okay. That is assuming there's another store because where I live, so you must be, well, you must be not <laughs> from Canada, but like in Canada, wherever we have stores, it's just in the biggest cities and there's only one. So like I live in Vancouver, there's only one store. Toronto has one store, Montreal has one and Calgary has one and that is it. So the entire country in Canada, the, the big land that we have, we only have four stores total and they're all super far apart. So I can't just not shop here and try to go to Calgary, for example, it's a 10 hour drive. So uh, I can't really just go to another store in, in a way. But I understand your question because you may be in a city where there are multiple stores. So if one doesn't work out, you can try another one. It's a little harder for me to relate just because I'm not in, in that kind of environment. I don't have another choice. But if I were in your position, uh, I mean, it's tough because this whole Hermes thing, right, is very competitive in nature. And so it's hard to quantify how much I would or how far I would go before I stop and try to move on. I'm someone who likes to see through the whole process before giving up. Like, I'm not someone to give up that quickly, especially if you've invested so much, right? It, assuming that you have been shopping at this one store for quite a bit and it sounds like <laughs> it's been a long journey for you too, then it, it's, it's very expensive. So like in a way, I wouldn't want all of that effort to go to waste and therefore I would just, I would just keep at it until my offer comes my way. It is sort of what the community kind of shares and so you get an idea of how much you have to do 
in order to be competitive with everyone and also so that the store would approve your bag offer because if you're just buying a couple of things they won't offer you anything they they probably can't because there's a slew of other people who are doing their pre-spend and unfortunately that is sort of the nature of how things are at Ahmed's they just don't have enough to go around right so in my own home store it's kind of common knowledge that you have to spend in ratio terms at least two many people go well beyond that and for me I try to keep it as organic as possible I know that I have to do my part I don't think it's that fun to have to constantly compete and constantly be spending so much it, it, it is something that I am well aware that unless you do that either you do that or you don't do that so I'll at least be patient to at least get that one bag offer that final one before stopping completely I wouldn't just let all of that go to waste if that makes sense and then move on to another store if there was another store in my case but like I said in our store there's only one um, I would say that my store is still pretty fair as far as I know um, everyone does get their bags eventually you really just have to have a solid profile or at least an average profile and just wait it out because I think the waiting is a lot more difficult than the shopping part obviously because uh, at the end of the day it's quite easy to shop it's really easy it's it's so fast to add up all these shopping <laughs> shopping trips um, but the waiting part could be the more harder part to deal with because everyone is also waiting and uh, that is the reason why the one bag quota a year is hard <laughs> it's really hard which is why for me going to Hawaii is kind of like an additional chance to get offers but I'm not expecting my expectation is lower in a sense that I do it more for the fun of shopping and that is part of like the whole trip adventure but if a bag offer also comes with it then it's kind of the cherry on top and that will also kind of make my local journey in Vancouver a little bit more you know at least have something in between while I wait for that one bag every year you know that one bag every year is a very long time to wait for one bag right uh, and that is if you even get one bag a year so Hawaii for me although you still have to build a profile there too so you are shopping a lot more but at least if there's any bag offers it kind of just eases the journey here I don't know how long I would do both of that also uh, I feel like once I have some solid classics that I'm still missing I probably wouldn't pursue both that actively anymore the next question is by Curtis J what was your top three favorite foods to eat in Hawaii oh there are so many I will say the first thing that comes to mind obviously is all the fresh sushi and sashimis um, it's a lot more accessible in Hawaii because I guess they get a lot of fresh tunas and different fish and there's also a high I'm not sure if there's actually a high population of Japanese or if there's just a high volume of Japanese tourists that goes goes there as well so it kind of also elevates the Japanese cuisines a lot and therefore you know sashimi sushi that's kind of part of their culture right so there's a lot you can find everywhere in terms of sushi I love the acai bowls or the acai smoothies passion fruit and papayas all just all the local fresh fruits you can taste the freshness you even feel more alive when you eat it there because I could buy the same papaya here or not the same but I could buy a papaya here and a pineapple here and it wouldn't taste the same does that make sense because obviously we have to import it and the enzymes and everything is just different than if it's ripened from the tree or you know picked from the farm there and literally being served to you the next day it just feels different and so yeah all the fresh fruit smoothies mm, and the acai bowls so good last but not least for some reason or maybe it's just the store that we go to the Kona coffee purveyor they just do their pastries so so well of course their coffee is amazing too but 
The pastries is another level. It's just so good. I don't even eat gluten usually. I avoid it. I am not allergic to gluten, but I don't tolerate it very well because then I get bloated and everything if I eat too much gluten. And so even for me, <laughs> I will make the exception for those pastries because they're that good. So yeah, I would say those are my favorite foods and yeah just a little little pleasures food definitely for me is a big reason why i travel to hawaii as well it's the food is so good how much less processing can you get than raw sushi right or the fresh fruit from the tree or uh, well the pastries you do have to bake it but you know what i mean like it's just it just tastes so fresh i feel like eating in hawaii is the freshness that i really really don't get at home <laughs> which is why i love going there that's part of the reason anyway miles dlt what do you think of the color rouge cellier and is it neutral enough the color is supposed to be a red tone but it is a very dark almost brown red so yeah i would consider that to be a neutral color especially for people who are just tired of black all the time or they're maybe they're just not into grays and not into taupes and black is just too black then rouge cellier is a gorgeous basically a gorgeous brown color but under certain lighting it does look a bit red as the name suggests because it is supposed to be a, a a tone of red right a different tone of red and yeah it's gorgeous it's really really lovely and i think in the right bag yeah i'm looking at all these pictures i think it looks gorgeous as a birkin the next question is by steph louis uh, do you know what is the spending ratio to get a quota bag in canada right <laughs> so like i said i reside in vancouver we only have four stores in all of canada so generally speaking from my experience the quota spend to get a bag in Canada is quite high because as you can already imagine, there's only four stores that serves the entire Canadian population. Now, Canada, even though we're a very big country in terms of land, the population is relatively low <laughs> considering the land that we have. So I understand why we only have four stores, um, but nevertheless, each store is in a big city, so there is a huge market nevertheless. So each store is still very competitive. So um, because of the, 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 the stock is not that it's lacking, but it, it's definitely on the lower end. And therefore, um, you know, they space it out, right? Like they space out one offer per year per client if your profile is good enough. So like I said earlier, generally speaking, as far as I know, in my home store, it the average is two, three, which is the average here. Um, so yes, you, you possibly you can get a bag for lower than that if it's your first bag or if you're asking for bags that are less popular. What I mean by that is maybe the color you're asking is not a neutral or maybe the size you're asking is a larger size. So those are a little bit less popular and therefore they will be easier to come by. Not because we get more of those stock, it's just that less people ask for those. And so, yeah, it, it just depends, I guess. It depends on what you're asking for, but I suppose people will follow the trends anyway nowadays smaller bags are still so popular most people still prefer to get smaller bags there will st always be people that will like the average size bags like the birkin 30s kelly 32s kelly 28s those will be slightly easier and perhaps the spend ratio on those will be slightly lower too or it can be slightly lower uh, because they're just you know, less in demand. So maybe your essay will be able to offer it to you before you even reach two to one spend. So, uh, but yeah, generally speaking, two in some cities like Vancouver, three to one is basically the average. The other hurdles in Canada, at least as a Canadian uh, for the Elmage journey is that you still have to wait. You can't just 
spend all your money in one shopping spree, right? Like, let's say you spend two to one in one shopping spree. I don't think they will offer you a bag, let's say your next visit, because apparently that's just a rule here that you have to be an established kind, like f to wait for your bag. So you still have to wait for it. I think even the fastest I've heard is that you would maybe get your bag at six months wait for your first bag. And that is considered very fast. And that is assuming you've done a lot of shopping and you're literally just waiting for your bag. Six months is the fastest that I've heard. But every subsequent bag that you get offered, and I mean quota bag, is a year, usually a year wait, or within that next year's anniversary. I I've never heard, or maybe you can correct me if you I'm wrong. If you're in Canada, let me know. Uh, if you've been offered more than one bag a year, and they are nice in-demand quota bags, then please let me know where, and I want to know too, because I have never heard of that happening in Canada. It's always been one bag a year and a quota, I mean, quota, one quota bag a year. And yeah, usually it involves at least one year wait, if not more. So yeah, it's quite competitive. A forever fashion lover, what do you think of the Chanel price increase? So um, I don't know, there's nothing to think about, I suppose. And I don't mean to sound I'm indifferent. I just feel like <laughs> it's such a normal thing, as in it happens every year, multiple times. Chanel especially is known to have such a high, higher price, but also a high interest, right? They have a very high interest. There's a lot of demand for their merchandise, especially the bags. They're very sought after, so I don't, I'm not phased by it anymore in a sense that I'm not really phased by any price increases anymore. And perhaps the fact that I'm not after a bag there as actively as I was in the past. So I am not really feeling any particular emotions. I'm not sad or angry or anything like that. Like. I just know that it will be the price that they are now. So if I really wanted to buy a certain thing, it will be whatever price it will be. And it's just that you either get it or you don't get it. That's how I see it. Um, there, there are other reasons why I'm not into Chanel as much these days. Now, Mez already is taking a lot of my, <laughs> a, a lot of my resources and time and effort. And so Chanel is just the you know, the the fun for the pleasure. And to be honest, Chanel has also become very competitive. I was told certain things, which we will discuss in the next question. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's just read this next question. Uh, also from a forever fashion lover, do you think the lawsuit against Almez is warranted? So before I even answer your question, I will tell you what happened to me at Chanel. I've been after the Kelly Chanel bag since they debuted the bag in fall of last year. So not quite a full year, but it's it's getting there. And every time I try to buy it in store or wait for the launch or ask about it, I was either... I was told many things actually. <laughs> at first I was told there is no stock or first come first serve or um, it's very hard to get, just come at launch and see. And so all of those things didn't materialize to anything because obviously every time I would show up and no matter how much in advance I ask about it, I couldn't get one. And so recently at the most, uh, during the most recent collection, so not the new one right now, but like the previous one. That was me doing it in person, not over the phone or text. In fact, all of these other times I was in asking in person as well. Um, I was told that they are all pre-sold to customers who um, are VICs. So my next question was, oh, so what, like, how do you become a VIC or how, how are you a VIC? Like, obviously I knew, but I just wanted to hear what they're going to say. And they said, oh, basically you have to have um, uh, a pretty, I don't know, high, not in, not verbatim. You basically have to have a very high shopping 
activities with them. Uh, and I said, okay, well, how, how much, like, can you give me an idea? <laughs> I think my essay, or well, he's not really my essay, but like the essay that I asked that, he kind of giggled a little bit. Not in a malicious way, but in a, in a way that is kind of almost a little embarrassing to even say it out loud. And so I just said, a hundred thousand? He didn't really give me a yes or no. And I just said, so basically you have to buy like ready to wear and this and that. And he's like, yeah. So like basically it gave me an idea that in other words, Chanel also has become the same thing. Super competitive. Maybe it's just the store that we have here because we only also have one store in Vancouver and there are so many big spenders here that, you know, unless you're the top 10 clients that are spending that kind of budget, 100,000 or over, then the likelihood of anyone else getting the Kelly bag is very, very unlikely or next to none. Unless your essay really loves you and helps you out, I guess, because um, as far as myself, I haven't had any luck. And so going back to this question, which is the lawsuit against Hermes, which I've read a bunch of articles about. I'm not a lawyer. And even if I am a lawyer, I guess this is just a question about my opinion, whether I think it's warranted or not. So. I really honestly feel I can play advocate on both sides. There is sort of like drama and this is dramatic in my opinion because it's two individuals that felt like they were unfairly treated and therefore they filed a lawsuit against Almez for not selling them a Birkin, right? Like it, it, the gist of it is, is that and in a way like I said, I can play advocates on both sides. So I'm going to quote this article. Both Cavallari and Glinoga have a history of shopping at Almez, And I'm assuming it's the San Francisco <laughs> store because they're both from San Francisco. Cavallari spent tens of thousands of dollars on Hermes ancillary products before obtaining a Birkin bag. And I guess that's maybe her first one. And so when she asked about buying another one, in September of 2022, she was told that bags were only offered to clients, and I quote, clients who have been consistent in supporting our business, unquote. So she ultimately did not obtain another bag that month, according to the lawsuit, knowing she would have to spend some more money to do so. And it says here that it is unclear whether she ended up buying another bag at a later date or how many Birkin bags she owns. So, okay, that actually, <laughs> it means that she has been having offers in the past, but just not this one time when she was told, and I quote, client who have been consistent in supporting our business. So I honestly feel like there would have been a better way for either the essay or whoever told her that to word the words more politely because essentially I was told the exact same thing at Chanel and hence I was never able to get a Kelly Chanel bag. I know they're not the same bags but essentially it's the same story like I've been told that unless I was the top 10 spender spending client and top 10 is what an essay actually told me because I spoke to several different essays unless I was the top 10 VICs at my store. I was denied the possibility to buy a Kelly Chanel bag because I'm not one of the highest spenders. So this is from the Washington Post. I can link it down below. You can have a read. I read many more other articles, of course, but I felt like this one was a good one, a little bit more neutral because there were other articles that use very strong words that would insinuate or kind of side with one side or another. So as far as the context go, it's very limited and we don't know anything else beyond the fact that she was denied buying a bag in September of 2022. And I don't know about the other individual, apparently also the, indivi the other individual was told similar things, but that is the nature of Almez's business model. They don't have a clear cut policy as to how much and what you have to buy in order to get 
these quota bag offers, right? Birkins and Kellys and Constances. It's not a across the board equal and fair policy. It says here on a different paragraph, experts are uncertain about the merits of the case, saying that Almez has a monopoly only over its own product. So what that means is that although Almez is limiting or restricting who and when they're offering their quota bags to clients, it only impacts people that are interested in Almez bags to begin with. It's not really a necessity and it's not going to affect everyone. Like if you don't shop there, it's not going to affect you. The fashion brand is inconsistent with its practices too, experts say, which gives it a lot of leeway on how and when the bags is distributed. There isn't a blanket policy that the lawsuit can attack. That is exactly what everyone already knows is that there is no clear cut policy or rule. It's all very, very different across every single individual. Everyone that you talk to will have a different story as to how they obtain their bags. And that is what is so, I guess, unique about this whole Hermes journey is that you can't really know the actual formula to, to get offers. You just have to do what you're willing to do as an individual or you don't do it because the question was whether it's warranted. I think it's not warranted. And don't, please don't kill me for it, guys, because I feel like anytime anyone does something very dramatic, whether they post it on social media and claim that they have been wronged or file a lawsuit, I'm sure the feelings are valid from that individual's point of view. I'm not invalidating that person's feelings as to how they were treated. But at the same time, I think there's a lot of the other context that we don't know about because we just don't know. We, we don't know maybe perhaps, and I'm just saying that has nothing to do with them, but like perhaps, right? Are these clients that are actually pleasant to deal with? Um, are they expecting an offer when you don't really, you can't really expect because there's no clear cut rules as to like, oh, buy this however much and then you'll get a bag. Like there's no rules like that that Hermes has to honor in a way. And I know it sucks, but a lot of times when these stories or news or dramatic uh, sharing from people, especially when they're so amplified on social media, there's a lot of like, um, the individual's righteousness that feels like he, that they're only right and that everyone else is wrong. And I'm not saying that, again, I'm not invalidating their feelings, but a lot of times, um, a lot of the things that happened that are maybe less glorified are minimized, so those are not shared. And maybe only the, the, the worst things are made amplified. We don't know their interpersonal relationship from previously, how it was. And we also don't know how the competition is like in that particular store. Maybe the spend ratio at that store may be just very, very high and these individuals have not reached it. And so I personally just don't feel like it needs to be a lawsuit about that <laughs> because it's... A <laughs> It's such a silly thing. It's just a bag. At the end of the day, it's just a bag. Although it's a very important bag and we all stress about it and we all do the journey and we all know how hard and also unfair it is. It is unfair. I will tell you that myself because, uh, again, the rules are not clear. There are no rules. It's really up to the discretion of that store, of that essay. At that moment, even from day to day, that essay or the management will have different feelings as to when and whether they want to offer it to their clients, right? So, and that is assuming there is a, even stock to be had. And um, it's a very unfair process. I think, <laughs> I, I would think that as a business, and that's me trying to advocate for them, they're trying their best to make it as fair as possible but also knowing that they are a business, at the end of the day, 
it is about the bottom line. When you are a business, you need to make profit to survive or to thrive. Actually, surviving is not enough. You need to thrive. If you're a business, you want to thrive. And at the end of the day, there will be people that spend more. There will be people that spend less. There will be people that just spend average. And there will be people that will not go at all because they just can't be bothered to to get these silly bags and for what right it's just for vanity and i'll be the first to tell you that like i love all the bags i love how they go with outfits i love the whole concept of craftsmanship i really do appreciate it so i'm okay with paying so much money go through crazy tumultuous journeys, losing essays, going to Hawaii to try my chances. Like I'm go I'm willing to go through that. But at the end of the day, I'm very, f very self-aware that all of the these things are only uh, they They are contributing to my joy, of course, but it is only on a material level. There's way more important things than just trying to get these bags in real like in life there are other things that are way more important so although it is part of my life and i really enjoy it um in terms of the lawsuit itself i just don't think it's worth it i don't think i just think that and there's a good saying in chinese I see fa siu, siu si fa mo, is that if there's a big problem to make big problems into smaller problems and smaller problems into like tiny little problems and that is what I would have done. I would have de-escalated the issue instead of escalated it. Because I feel like there's just a whole other way of handling it. If that particular person or essay had said those words about only offering bags to only consistent uh, clients that have been supporting their business consistently, I would just move on to a different essay. Or... I would move on to a different store, like you said. Now, I know and I'm very aware that there aren't always another store to to service you then I would just literally I would just work it out somehow you can have a calm and civilized discussion with the management team at that store and figure it out because honestly there's really no need to go that far in my opinion and that is maybe a cultural thing like i've always learned growing up that if there's any problems they always can be solved you don't have to go through you don't have to make it a bigger problem the goal is actually to make it into a smaller problem to solve it please again don't come for me because um it's not that i don't empathize i know it's completely unfair but at the same time, what else can you do? You've decided to dip your feet in it. Then all you can do is to wait it out and to hope for the best because that's all you can do, right? To sue a business to try to get the upper hand uh, is only going to make matters worse. You're going to be blacklisted. Like I said, I don't know if they are reseller. I don't know if they're just ve maybe very unpleasant people to deal with. I don't know. Maybe that store is just, they're completely uh, unethical as well. So maybe that store in particular was just not doing the right things. Maybe they are being super unfair and 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 targeting certain people, never giving them bags. I don't know. But as far as I know, she has gotten bags before, just not this one time. Um, so again, I, I'm popular opinion maybe. I don't think it's warranted, I'm sorry. I just, I feel like there's always a solution to a problem unless it's a life or death situation. This is not a life or death situation. It's such a non-problem problem. Anyway, thank you all so much for the questions. Wow, so hard. I'll pop my Hawaii vlog as well as my Hawaii shopping haul unboxing in the screen so you can enjoy it if you haven't seen it yet. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.